Hi, I just wanted to uh, explain to you some of the genetics research which is going on at the uh, Melbourne Brain Centre and in the MS group here in Parkville. But to do that, I want to take you back to why we're doing genetics research at all. Now in populations, you can detect very strong genetics effects associated with causing MS. For example, if we compare Taiwan to Australia, we might do that, even though one is a small island and one is a very large island, is because Taiwan is largely Chinese and Australia is of course majority Caucasian genetically. And both countries have about the same population, 23 million. And we have about 25,000 people with MS in Australia give or take a few thousand, we don't know exactly. And in Taiwan, that's about 1,200. So being Chinese in Taiwan, you've got 20 times lower risk of getting MS than being a Caucasian in Australia. And that's largely, we think, a genetic effect. Of course, we also know that MS affects women three times more commonly than men. Clearly, ultimately, a genetic effect. So that's at population levels where the genetics are clearly very important. At the individual level, you know, as doctors uh, looking after people with MS, we get asked all the time, what's the risk of my children getting MS? It's not, in that sense, a very strongly transmitted genetic disease. It happens um, about 1% to 2% of the time. So roughly, the risk of inheriting MS, which is probably the wrong word here, but the risk of, of of MS occurring in a child, of somebody who has MS in Australia is around 2%. So not huge. You know, that's 50 children for every one uh, with MS. So nonetheless, these genetic clues were strong enough for people to be interested in trying to understand genetic causes of MS. Ultimately, we all want to understand what causes MS. So the experiments that have been done have been facilitated by technology. Technological evolution, engineering if you like, of assessing genes and genetics has moved massively and it continues to move rapidly. Um, but what's happened in the world is that thousands of people have uh, participated in projects where people with MS and people who don't have MS are compared genetically. And what we were really hoping for was a simple answer. This is the cause of MS, you know, this gene is different or that gene is different. But it turns out that right now we're not in that position. What we know, in fact, is that at least 110 genes are different, but only very slightly. And these genes are actually uh, all what we call common human variations. So they themselves uh, are not coding for any faults. Um, I want to explain that just a little bit um, because I think it's really important. Normal human variation might be blue eyes, green eyes, or in the immune system it might mean that if I immunize you, you make slightly more antibodies than me, or your immune cells move to the source slightly faster than me, but both of our immune systems work. They work perfectly well. Um, they're just slightly different. You might have more immune cells circulating in the blood than me, but I have enough and you don't have too many. So these are normal human variations, but nonetheless some of these normal human, human variations tag MS. In other words, it's like saying people with blue eyes are slightly more likely to have MS. So we have 110 of these clues distributed all around the genome, and here um, at the MBC and in the MS group based in Parkville, we're desperately interested in how some of these things work. That's painstaking work where we actually understand the function, try to understand the function of these genes which we know to be different, slightly different um, in people with MS and people who don't have MS. Um, those projects usually involve taking quite a lot of blood, sorting immune cells into the various kinds of immune cells that exist when there's many T cells, B cells, macrophages, neutrophils, you might have heard of some of these cells, and then working out how these genes are actually working in those cells. Um, and we do that by understanding how the genes are actually translated 
um, at the molecular level. So that's one big project um, going on with lots of sub-projects um, here in Melbourne.